The parameters of consciousness are fine-tuned towards survival, right? Consciousness is optimized for us to be on alert, for us to embody a kind of hypervigilance, for us not to get eaten by the predator, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's eat or be eaten, it's kill or be killed. And this Darwinian fine tuning certainly makes a lot of sense. We are the descendants of those that were on guard. The problem is that as we have domesticated large parts of the world, our hypervigilance has become pathological. Uh, anxiety now has become <laughs> kind of a, 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 an illness that is at an epidemic level. I mean, most of us probably will not face any real significant danger in our day-to-day -day lives, yet we're walking around with a nervous system that is sort of fine-tuned for the immediate danger that's never quite becoming apparent. And so we're, we're kind of like, like a sheepdog, permanently on guard, permanently on fight or flight, but never actually getting to fight or flee. So this perpetual angst, this constant knot, um, strangle holds us and keeps us from ever actually enjoying <sighs> introspective contemplation, creativity, joy, gratitude, and bliss because we're never really present, right? We're sort of, uh, our past traumas, our fears, our inherited fears even, in over-determining the present, constantly conjure up a future that becomes immediately identified with death. It's like we're in a perpetual pre-panic attack. And this is a horrible thing. And it's only really when you experience an altered state of consciousness, when you actually find yourself in the present, right? <laughs> actually living in the now, free from the suffocating quagmire of impending doom that you realize, holy shit, I've been living my whole life um, in a miserable state, uh, in, a, in a rushed, anxious, uh, fear-addled state of mind. And so I guess in the end, the, the, the lesson herein, I mean, the, the realization, the, the epiphany that I might be having in this moment is that those people that are prescribing us mindfulness, those people that speak to the fact that there's plenty of space in the here and in the now, you know, they're, they're on to something. And, and I think in the end, it's all about balance because you can't be all the time in the present because then you'd never plan for anything. But, uh, but certainly in our, <laughs> in our increasingly frenetic world, we could benefit from some unhurried living and some techniques and technologies that facilitate immersion into the present. Uh, so yeah, reflections for the day. Learn to be here, learn to be now.